Hello everybody, it's part four. I've had to um, wait for a while to do part four because uh, I've been having major dental indignities performed upon me. I am now starting to recover. I've been quite sort of tired and sore and a bit vague sometimes because uh, of the pain, but I'm um, starting to recover, so if I'm a little bit vague today, you'll know why, and I apologise in, uh, in, just in case. But anyway, I'm going to try and show you um, actually something practical on this boat, um, the um, Golden Hind. So what I'm going to do is, I'll put that in there, and as you can see, there's some um, bubbles coming off as the this boiling water I just put in there from the kettle. I'll just have a quick sip of my cup over here. Ah, lovely. Nice cup of chai. Lovely old chai. So there we are. So I'll turn it around the other way now. Oh yeah, there's a lot, lot coming off that one. A lot of things coming off that one. You see all the bubbles? I'll turn it around the other way again. I'll turn it around again. Do it about four or five times to get all the bubbles, you know, to get to get the fibres of the wood to uh, absorb as much water as they can because then that, that really helps the situation before I put the glue on. So there we go, I'll drop the other side in again. I'm only using hot water here, I normally steam them and leave them in there for about 10 minutes but um, this works just as well and it's a little bit quicker so I won't um, subject you to the steaming process because it'll just it'll be boring for you so I'll just just do it this way. Just keep stirring it until it actually starts to settle down a bit. So that, that should be enough really. I'll just put that, that one in. So what I do then is I take the um, this chopper thing, nibbler, I guess you'd call it, and just nibble the, the ends. Now what I do is I start from the back of the bar, the, the blighter. Hang on, got it around the wrong way. Back of the, of the blighter. I will not use any other words apart from English, nice English friendly words. So that's, that's, oops, a little crack there, but that won't matter. Just a little crack there, but that's not going to matter much. That's a good thing, even if you sort of crack it a bit, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect things. But I, I, I wouldn't do it more than once or twice. If I did, I'd probably get another stick, but that one's not too bad, certainly. Not not badly broken. It's just a bit cracked. There we go. So then, what you do is you get that out of the way. I'll put it down there, out of the way, and then I'll move the boiling hot water because I don't want to have any indignities fall upon me from the boiling water. And so, what I do is I start from the rear. I'll put this. Oh, no, I can't cut the bit of the seat down there. I'll do is I'll, I normally put it on my knee, but I won't do that this time. Is I go to the end there. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. And, um, yeah, that'll do. And then what I do is I get the glue. And I put the glue all the way along, starting at the back. There we are, some along there, some along there, some along there, and there, there. Right 
to the front. The good thing with this white glue is that um, you can put a whole lot of it on and as it sets it shrinks down and um, you don't get sort of a residue of, of, of glue that's not being used. It kind of, it's very good that way, I don't know how they've designed it that way but that's the way it's working. So then I can come, usually what I do is I go to about, you know, this one here, one of the middle ones, and then I turn on my little drill, there she goes, and then I drill a little hole, use my knees, so I don't have to switch it off and on each time, I'm just sitting here buzzing away between my knees. And then I'll just take this. Lovely little hammer. It's a real beauty. It's a really, really nice hammer. And um, then we go into here. through to the next one and drill. Oops, just a little bit of voltage. Now I'll show you something in a minute when I get to the end one. So that one's in nicely. That actually allows you to get it into a, a reasonable angle. So what I'll do is I'll I'm just, I'm just going to bend this last one up into its place. See, the wood's allowing me to do that because it's been um, fairly well soaked. So, and then I just take this. Now, on this back one, there's quite an angle, so I'm just going to make sure that I can angle down into the into the uh, rib here and it doesn't go either one side or the other side of the rib so then it could cause trouble so there we go put that in there yeah, that's good that's a nice angle straight into the rib and hasn't come out no it hasn't come out the side that's great so what I do now is I go to the front I'll just show you, and I bring the thing around and see where it's going to end up. Probably just take this and cut it off about about there, and then follow it through. I'll just spill those on there because it's easier to get rather than having to get, get them out of here. I'll just spill them on the counter and that makes it really easy to get, to get at them. Okay, there's another one in there. There we go. Hammer. That's quite a nice day over here today. So you, as you can see, that's it's not straining the wood at all, but it will at the front. But it's best. I, I find it's best to work from the keel and and come upwards from there. It could work the other way too. It really wouldn't make a lot of difference. But I just, I just find this, for me, it works better from the keel. Should try the other way sometimes just to see. Well, that probably doesn't make a lot of difference. There you go. Gee, Rebecca's been listening to a beautiful song. Um, it's um, originally Sting belonged to his son called Fields of Gold, and it's 
all sorts of international artists have been singing it, and it's absolutely a beautiful song. Yeah, you know, Rebecca really loves listening to all beautiful songs because she's she'd be a really good singer if she really you know wanted to. So it's really nice that she can um, sing along to those songs and um, be a happy girl. Yeah, and she gets me to come down. John, let's come and listen to this. And it's like, whoa, it's amazing. So it's nice for me too. Especially in this time where we've got interesting things going on in the world. It's nice to be, to hear that, you know, the human spirit will not be held down by anything, that the human spirit will always find a way. There we go. So that one there is ready. So put a little nail in there. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's my llama. Oh lovely. Yeah, it's a bit of a funny angle on that one. Now that I've done that, what I can do, I don't know if it'll work on this part, but usually I put some of these in. I think that'll probably fit in there alright. To even things up a bit. Oh yeah, that's gonna work great. So I always do them around this way. These things are fantastic. They are really, really excellent. That's perfect for this sort of thing. If you're into this sort of thing, I'd, I'd track some of these down. I got them on eBay. I forget how much they were and what they're called, but anyway, they're, they're little, little clothes pegs that things, and they are fantastic for this work. They do quite often break, but that's okay. You get 50 for a few bucks. So I'd, I'd say that's great. And, um, so anyway, we can, I think that's all the nailing done now. Now, as you can see, the front looks very undignified, doesn't it? It's, it's a big mess, but that doesn't matter because I can um, make it look like this back here. See how, how nice. Nice that is, that's come up lovely, look, at the top there. So it all gets small, that's only half done, that's not finished. So it's, um, it comes up like that and then no matter how many indignities you've performed upon it, um, and I have performed many uh, on all of my ships, even though they look quite all right, because the good thing is, I'll just switch this. Beastie off and put them out there out of the way because I can, you know, put the beautiful brown, very thin half mil planking over the top of all the indignities once they've all been sanded back so they're never shown to the, to the public. And I'll show you what I mean. I do have, as we speak, I will just move over to here and I will show you the endurance. Look at that. See how nice it comes up? It's a few tiny things, but that's was a very rough one and it's come up lovely. And I'm actually waiting till. I've got a bit more expertise with building these blighters um, until I actually do advance upon this one and uh, there. See. I will do some more work on this one at some, some time in the future. So it's come up quite nice. And of course, you, you know, you get this, but the, the right sort of paint for them. I always use acrylic. And Danish oil is very good on the decks. So I use Danish oil on the decking. And on the hulls that are just brown, and it's the brown you're painting on, uh, you know, the, the half mil brown um, planking. I use Danish oil on that and 
It is the business, I tell you. The boat looks beautiful afterwards. The Danish oil is the business, I tell you, for, for, these, for this sort of thing. So, anyway, I'm going to check on the planking on this blighter now to make sure that it's all good. Here we are, put another clamp on here. Yeah. So, in a way, the clamps don't really matter that much because the, um, when you sand them down, that, that just smooths everything up and you've got um, probably a couple of mil, I think. These are a couple of mil thick. So you've got quite a bit of leeway in there. And also, if you're a little concerned, you can do what I did here. There is lots and lots and lots of filler. This is really hard stuff, it's great. So I'm taking a bit more care on this one this time to, to make the filler look good. But then here you see is what the wood of this mess here should be. So I will sand that all down once I've got all the planking done. The first layer of planking and the second layer of planking is done. I will then get this to behave itself and look proper. Probably what I will do is I'll sand this at the end of the first layer of planking and leave about half a mil and then put the second layer of planking on and then trim it and just give it a little bit of a, a touch up to make it look nice. So there's all sorts of little tricks and, and of the trade sort of thing that you can do to make them look okay. So yeah, so I put put two planks on this one today. I did one just before to to see if I could um, probably make it make it look alright on on camera. And I checked it on camera and it looked, looked fairly reasonable. So I thought, oh well, I'll, I'll go ahead. And if I make a mistake or make a fool of myself, it doesn't matter anyway because you know we're all human and we <laughs> uh, we all just do silly things from time to time, you look at the world for example. Anyway folks, um, I'm not going to babble on too much, but um, thank you for listening and uh, I hope you are all well and that you're looking after yourselves and your, and your loved ones and uh, I'll get back to me cuppa. Cheers. <laughs>